Hey there folks, Aldershot here, and today we're going to preview Jalopy. It's not quite released for the public yet. Currently, as you can see from this newspaper down here, I'm playing the pre-alpha press build. So uh, it will be available to the public on April the 14th. And by the way, it's developed by Minxworks. That's the developer. Um, Jalopy is kind of interesting. I already played a little tiny bit of it just to see what the game's all about. And uh, it, it takes some ideas from simulation games like Mechanic Simulator and maybe European Truck Simulator, but adds his own spin to it, right? It's sort of hard to explain without showing you guys, so I'm going to show you guys the first few minutes of the game um, just to give you guys an idea. But uh, it takes place in the early 90s, just after the Berlin Wall falling. And it takes place around that area of Europe as well, the eastern side of Europe, or eastern Europe, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, it has an interesting story, you know, and it has an interesting graphical styling to it, of course. But we'll talk more about that when we jump into the game, which we will do uh, right now. And we will start a new game. Just so I can show you guys, you know, all the doodads and stuff that Jalopy has to offer. Anyways, June 23rd, 1990. The Berlin Wall has fallen, causing a ripple of political change throughout the East. My uncle, after years of service to the States, has been rewarded with the unrestricted access of a Leica 601 Deluxe motor vehicle. And that's the vehicle that we'll be fixing up and driving around in this video, by the way. With the newfound freedom, we plan to head east to his birth line. It has been, uh, I think that says 41, or it could be 11. It's hard to read or hard to say with this font, but uh, we'll just say 41 years since he has seen that faraway place. Uh, all right, confirm. Loading. So again, this is a pre-alpha press build, if you will. I'm not sure how accurate this will be to uh, the public release, but I'm, I would imagine to be fairly accurate to, to whatever uh, state it will come out in. But anyways, wake up. Wake up. Ah, awake, finally. Hmm, stay in bed any longer and the day will make fools of us both. Come now, I've something important to show you. Come, come, it's just outside. So we're in the game now. Um, first thing that kind of grabbed my attention is the graphics, of course. As would uh, many games, you know, is kind of the first thing to make a first impression on most people, I think. Uh, it's done in this very interesting low polygon style to it, right? And, uh, yeah, it, I think it works. It's done artistically, you know, there's a nice concept behind it. And, uh, yeah, it just looks kind of interesting, you know? I think it does. But, uh, anyways, let's meet our uncle out here. This here is the Leica 601 Deluxe. Something of an engineering legend in the GDR. 0 to 60 kilometers an hour in 22.5 seconds. A top speed of 100 kilometers an hour, all at the economical rates of 25 mpg. That is, if we can get her running. Not to worry, I've, I've everything ready. We'll just need to build her an engine, slap on some wheels, fit the passenger side door, and give her a bit of a clean. So let's get started. Fit the replacement door. It's over on top of that scrap pile behind you. So it's up here. Like I said, I already played through this part, but I want to show you guys anyways, because uh, this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the game, you know, fixing up the car and keeping it in good check and all that kind of stuff, right? If you squint, you'll be able to see it. Uh, RMB to squint. Ah, I'm squinting, so good. Anyways, let's pick up the door here and uh, drop it off in the car here, just like that. Less than elegant, but it's on. Now, uh, let's fit the engine. If you open the driver's side door, you'll see a black latch. Pull that, and it will release the bonnet. Over in Europe, they call it the bonnet. Over in Canada, or probably in the US as well, I think we call it the hood, right? But uh, bonnet works. It's tomato, tomato, all that stuff. Who says tomato, though, honestly? Can you see it? 
It's the black latch should be just under the steering wheel. So I think this is what he's talking about. Alright, so now that the bonnet slash hood is popped open, let's check it out. Okay, now we can open the bonnet and can walk, and I can walk you through this. Alright, good stuff. As you can see, she needs an engine, indeed. Uh, I've got a load of stock parts in the garage. Go collect one and I'll walk you through what it does. Alright, let's do that. Let's go back into our garage here. Oh, here it goes, magically opening. So let's grab some of these stock parts here. Alright, so we got three pieces. Good enough. We'll come back for the rest. That's the battery, which provides the electrical charge for your Leica. Yeah. The battery allows you to use lights, the radio, the car engine, that kind of thing. If your Leica won't start, the first place to check is the battery. Go ahead, drop it into the engine. All right. Whoop. That's the water tank, which provides water to help keep your windshield clean from dirt. Keep it in good condition or it'll start to leak water and you'll soon find yourself driving without any vision. And we wouldn't want to do that, would we? Alright, well let's drop it into the car, shall we? Go ahead, drop it into the engine. There we go. Right, that's the carburetor, which controls the fuel consumption of the car, which in turn controls the MPG you'll get out of your Leica. A good, well-maintained carburetor will mean you use less fuel. You can drive, or N can drive, further for cheaper. I like the sound of that. I'm, I'm pretty cheap. Go ahead, drop it into the engine. Alright, let's grab some more stuff, shall we? Here's some more stuff here. Let's grab this thing, whatever it is, that thing, and this thing. Alright, we'll come back for whatever that is. That's the engine block you'll get there. Or that's the engine block you've got there. There we go. The core of your Leica setup. The engine block defines core performance of your Leica, including top speed and acceleration. A poorly kept engine block will mean your Leica will struggle to perform. Go ahead and drop it into the engine. Boop. Okay, you're holding the air filter, a non-essential component. The air filter isn't necessarily required to run your Leica, but it's a good idea to have one as it will reduce the rate of wear to your engine block. Go ahead, drop it into the engine. Alright, boop. The big lump of metal is the fuel tank which holds the fuel of your Leica. A few notes on this one, first of all, it's gravity fed, so you'll need to open the bonnet and fill directly to the tank when refueling. Also, your Leica is running a two-stroke engine. This means you'll want to mix in some oil to the fuel mixture. Failure to mix oil into the fuel will mean the engine won't be lubricated and will wear at an increased rate. Too much oil though and you'll start to see performance drops. Keep your fuel tank well maintained. Let it get too beaten up and it will start leaking fuel everywhere. Go ahead, drop it into the engine. All right, good stuff. Almost there, guys. We gotta grab a couple more things, and then we have ourselves an engine. Okay, maybe one more thing. All right, that's the last thing. All right, let's 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 drop it in there. That little thing is the ignition coil. The ignition coil channels is electrical charge to start the engine. An ignition coil that's in bad condition may struggle to start the engine. Go ahead, drop it into the engine. No, that's not what I want. Uh, right there? Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's everything installed. Good job. Now to fill her up, we're getting nowhere without fuel. There should be a can of fuel, a bottle of water, and something something. I didn't read that part. We need some, or we still need to fill the car with petrol, oil, and water. Go and collect them and I'll walk you through refueling your car. Alright, let's do that. So as you can see, there's definitely some uh, mechanical simulation going on here, right? You got to build your own engine, you got to take care of it yourself, and all that kind of stuff. Which is interesting, you know, like, uh, especially for somebody like me, who, you know, who I think I can drive alright, but I have absolutely no idea how a car runs, no idea how to build a car, 
or what component does what. This should be an interesting educational experience for somebody like me. <laughs> but also, uh, I could, you know, I could have some trouble learning a game like this because of how little I know about a car and what parts do what, you know, so I gotta kind of remember everything that the game's trying to teach me here. So again, it should be an interesting educational experience here. Uh, anyways, good. That's a can of fuel you're holding there. If you see that on the fuel cap of the fuel tank we just installed, then you'll be then you'll begin filling the car with fuel. All right. Ah, fill that fuel. All right. Go ahead and drop that if you're done with it. Q to drop. All right, Q to drop. That's the bottle of two-stroke oil you have in your hands. You'll want to add a drop of it to improve the fuel mixture, which affects things like performance and engine wear. A lean mixture will result in a faster car, but with increased wear to the engine. A rich mixture will result in the opposite. Try using it uh, on the fuel tank of fuel to affect the fuel mixture. You just said fuel a whole bunch of times in very quick succession. Go ahead and drop that if you're done with it. I am, so cue to drop. There we go. Ah, have you got a bottle of water? Good job. If you use down the water tank well, we installed, then we can fill her with water. All right. I think that's the water tank. Uh, fill. There we go. Go ahead and drop that if you're done. And we are certainly done with it. There we go. Excellent. Let's move on to the tires. Yes, I agree. Okay, let's go about getting some tires on the car. Did they purposely spell tires wrong, or are they trying to be hip? I'm not. I'm not quite sure here. <laughs> T y r e s. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be an I. Uh, but whatever. I'm just getting overly picky now. Uh, so as you can see, we won't get very far without any wheels. There's a car jack over in the garage. Bring it over, and we can get started. All right, let's do that. And let's grab the car jack. A couple of these wheels here. Literally a couple of wheels. Okay, place the jack under the car. I can do that. Now just twist the handle. You'll notice you can now use the tire iron, but first we'll need to fit the tires. We need to fit the road tires. Go ahead and drop that. Okay. Q, I guess. Good. Now just fit the tire, the road tire to the axle. All right. Just like that, I guess. Then tighten the bolts with the tire iron. Uh, ah, there we go. Tire ironed. And now the same again for the other wheel. All right, so I guess we should probably pick this one up here. Throw it on uh, this thing here, maybe. Or maybe the other side? No. I forget this part. Uh... Squeak, squeak, squeak. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I gotta drop the... There we go. Drop the uh, iron first. And then put on the wheel. Then pick up the iron. And then tighten the bolts. So you kind of have to do everything in this game manually. Which adds, you know, a degree of immersion and simulation to it. I can appreciate it, honestly. Good. You can now drop the car jack down. And we can do uh, the same again for the other side of the car. Okay, sounds like a, sounds like a plan to me. Drop the car down, pick up the iron, uh, close the door, and put it on the other side. Now twist the handle. I can do that. <laughs> oh, excuse me, guys. It's allergy season for me. <laughs> You'll notice that you can now use the tire iron, but first we'll need to get... Uh, we'll need to fit the road tires. Go ahead and drop that. All right. Let's grab the other two wheels left. Yoink and yoink. And good. Now just fit the road tires to the axle. Boop. Just like that. Pick up the iron again. Tighten that bolt. Tighten, tighten that. Tighten that bolt. Okay, maybe I have to drop. All right, there we go. There we go. I had to drop the other tire first. 
Now I guess I have to drop the iron. There we go. Now I can put on the tire. One thing at a time, I guess. Pick up the iron again. And then tighten the bolts. Tight tighten the bolts. Tighten the bolts. You're not tightening the bolts. Why are you not tightening the bolts? There we go. Tightening tightening the bolts. God damn it. Okay, now let's see how she runs. I agree. Uh, I'll be in the car. You may want to load the trunk with any spears left over in the garage. You can never be sure what you'll need on the road. I agree. Uh, I guess the first thing we should do is probably lower the jack, I would imagine. Lower the jack. Pick up the iron. Open up the back. <clears throat> Let's put the iron in here. Or not. Let's put the iron in there. Or not. Can I even put the iron in there? Yes, I can. Okay, there we go. Good. Uh, any spears in the garage? Hey, I don't see any spears, to be honest. I only see some some extra tools. I guess we'll pick the, this stuff up. Why not? While we're here. No, nope, definitely no spears that I can see. Well, I might as well throw this into the back as well. Why not? And this stuff, too. You never know. Oh, I guess it's full. Uh, let's see. It's extra gasoline. We probably, You know what? Screw the water. Let's let's drop the water. Put all the stuff down. No, no, put that back down. I want to take the oil and put it in here. There we go. And probably the bottle of water. There we go. We'll leave the bucket of water. Let's see if we can find any spears here to put into the back of the car. I don't think there is, actually. Nope, no spear tires. Oh, well. C'est la vie. And I'm pretty sure I can't fit this in the garage or in the uh, back of the car. Oh, I can! Okay, I can fit everything in there. Good enough. Let's close the back there. Close the hood. Like I said, you have to manually do everything in this game, right? Nothing is actually done for you automatically, which I think... Gives the game a sense of immersion. Okay, before we set off, let's get your get you familiar with some of the important uh, <clears throat> components. Here we have the maintenance manual. It will cover the basics of running the car. In there, you'll find inf information regarding a basic overview of the Leica vehicle, details of your current engine setup, listings of the cargo we're currently carrying, that sort of thing. You can turn the page by selecting the top corner of each page. You even have to turn the pages manually, which is kind of interesting. We'll have a look through this later. For now, go ahead and drop that. Alright, we can do that. Next, you'll need the map. Uh, where is the map? Oh, here it is. This one is important. It allows you to select which route you'll be taking between each destination. As you can see, our first destination is the CSFR border crossing near Dresden. I marked, I think that means I've marked, but it might be a mistype. Oh well. I've marked all the potential routes I know of, including weather conditions and any spots, any uh, stop off points along the route. Go ahead and select one now. Alright, so. Uh, our mouse seems to be, oh here we go. So it's a very, very tiny cursor. It's a little bit hard to pick out sometimes. Uh, we can try this one here, shortest route, but it seems to be foggy. We can try this one, it's a longer one, but sunny and bright. Let's try the sunny and bright one, let's try that one, why not? Alright. Once a route has been selected, we're then committed to driving it. And again, you can turn pages by selecting the top corners. Uh, the other page included your stats. Your statistic tracking and unlock tracking. Alright. You can have a look through that later. Go ahead and close that for now. Good stuff. And finally, the keys. Finally! <laughs> if you just pop them into the ignition and she's all yours. Let's do that. Throw into the mission. Ignition. Close the door. Start this sucker. Ah, she purring like a kitty. Beautiful, I love it. Alright, WASD to drive, hey? Well, this doesn't drive like, um, 
American Truck Simulator, where the the what's it called? The uh, mouse is your steering wheel, but you know, like I said, this isn't fully a, a simulation game. There's definitely a degree of narrative and story being told here, but it is very detailed in its controls and mechanics, though. You know, you have to do everything yourself. You have to uh, close the door, start the engine, you know, put on the wheels, check the engine, all that kind of stuff, all on your own. Nothing seems to be automatic, which it seems to be an interesting uh, ideas for mechanics, right? But anyways, let's read what our uncle has to say. I'm driving and reading at the same time. I don't recommend doing this, by the way, in real life. And so begins our journey, indeed. Head towards Dresden. We'll be traveling the Autobahns for the first part. This should give you a chance to get to grips with the Leica. Alright. So far, so good. Some pretty sights here. Some real pretty sights. I like the tank. I like the tank real good. Let's go around this roundabout. Oh, other other uh, Autobahn users. <laughs> other auto automat automatists. <laughs> I'm just making up words here now, guys. Uh, I think I gotta follow these guys. I'm not really sure. There's no like GPS or mini map or anything like that. We do have uh, our map in which we have to we have to go and check manually. There's no shortcut key or anything like that. You have to like pull over and look at the map just like in real life. We're still going the right way though. It's Dresden, according to that sign. So I'll go through our journey a little with you. We're heading towards Dresden so we can cross the border into the Czech, the Czech Socialist Republic. I'll just say that. I don't want to butcher the name any more than I was going to. Um, no, wait, that's not right. Didn't they change the name recently? Hmm. Was it... I don't know. Was it? Anyways, nice day out. Beautiful day for a little drive. What on earth did they change the name to? I don't know, buddy. I don't know, Uncle. You tell me. You tell me. It's, uh, it's relatively difficult to drive and read at the same time. But I haven't hit anything yet, so that's, uh, that's something at least. But I really like the graphics in this game. I, I know, I know, you know, it, it's... Using the old low poly look is not the first game to do that, but um, I'm kind of a fan. I like it. It's done right, and I think this game's doing it right, you know. It's well designed, it's cohesive, and it's, you know, concept as far as graphical styling is concerned. I just like it. I, I think it looks nice, you know. It's uh, using the old kiss philosophy. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, Uncle. I hit the guardrail. Now our engine's, you know, smoking, which is not a good sign, but whatever. The engine looks in trouble. Stop the car when it's safe to do so. All right. How about now? Damn it! Sorry. Uh, all right. Well, let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The engine looks in trouble. Stop the car when it's do so. Okay. The engine stopped. Oh, there's a blink button. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Ease to blink. I don't know why there's a blink button, but there is. Anyways, I open the door. I want to get out. Let's uh, let's let's pull over to the other side. Maybe I can get out then. Okay. I want to get out. The game won't let me get out. I've stopped the car. Oh, well, let's just keep driving. Whatever. I thought maybe I could get out and check the engine, you know, kind of like in real life. But apparently not. Maybe I'm missing some things possible. Anyways, we'll have to just keep moving forward with the smoky engine. So I guess this is the driving part. It's not quite as detailed as the mechanical part, admittedly. Um, like I said, there's definitely no European truck driving simulator or European truck simulator. Um, but the sights are nice, you know. You, you got you got the, the nuclear power plant there. I wonder if Homer's working. Uh, yeah, I, don't know, I, I like it. I like it so far. It's, it's I'm driving on the road. <laughs> I am curious to know if maybe if I, you know, go above the speed limit or something like that, will I get a ticket? I'm just curious to know how detailed the actual driving simulation portion of the game actually is, because uh, it's probably the part that I have least have the least experience with, I guess. But uh, we'll see. We're currently, I think, driving the speed limit. We're not going all that fast. Other motorists around us is uh, 
either going the same rates or going faster than us. So I'm pretty sure we haven't hit the speed limits. Aha! That was it, the check in Slavic Federation Republic. 40 years! And now a wall falls over, they decide to change the name. I hope the fact that they've dropped the socialists from the name doesn't affect our passage. I don't know, you tell me. You tell me. I think it's, uh, I think the story has some potential as well, I don't know. It seems to be diving into some real life historic events which has my interest peaked you know i'm definitely curious to life after the berlin wall and uh, this game seems to want to tell a story of exactly that life after the berlin wall uh so yeah kind of interesting you can kind of look around while driving as well as you can see you know i did this journey the other way uh, around many years ago when i was much younger names didn't escape me so easily. The world was a lot less turbulent back then. It seems to be, uh, we're, seem, we're seeming to be running into the nighttime. Let's see. Can we turn on the lights? No, that's the wipers. This is the lights? There we go. Yeah, we actually have to manually turn on the lights as well, which I, I think kind of, is kind of interesting, you know? Like I said, everything in this game you have to manually do. Which again, I think, is part of the core mechanics of uh, Jalopy. But uh, anyways, let's keep moving forward here. What? What did I do? We need to fix this. Stop the car when it's safe to do so. I'm trying to, man. Okay, okay. Stop the car. Oh, maybe I have to turn off the engine too. There we go. Now we can get out. Okay, good. Sorry, buddy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Freaking smack us in the back there. Why don't you just go around me, you idiot? Well, looks like we have a problem. We'll need to repair kit to make the repairs. Grab one out of the trunk. Ah, go away, go away, go away. All right, all right, I'll move, Jesus. Oh my god, this guy, this guy's annoying me. This is uh, Road Rage Simulator 2016, or 1990 actually. Uh, okay, okay, I'll move, I'll move. I'll move, I'll move, oh my god. So annoying. Oh yeah, now you're driving around me. Alright. Are you happy now? Can't you tell this is an emergency? <laughs> Alright, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Now, let's turn off the car again. And step out. Please don't smack us again, other cars. Anyways, let's uh, open up our bonnets. Grab the... Another one. Too bad. Too bad. Get get out. Let's open this up. This is an emergency! Okay? This is an emergency! Oh my god. These people. Oh yeah. This is not this is not a civil way to handle road rage, just so you guys know. Anyways, let's fix up some of this stuff here nice and quick. We're gonna need to. Okay, good stuff here. No, 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 put that back. No, no, I need that. Put that back. Put that back. Put that back. No! Stop that. Okay. Maybe I needed to do that, actually. Okay. This is as fixed up as I can get it, I think. I'm just trying to put this back here now. But it's not letting me! Oh my god. This game, this game is, um... I'm trying to put this stuff back, but it doesn't seem to want to let me. Uh, stock carbonator. Okay, fix all this stuff here. Let's, maybe I have to drop it? Q, Q. 
Q to drop, Q to drop, Q to drop. It's not, it's not letting me drop it. Oh my god. Well, I can't move. I'm holding my goddamn engine in my hand, okay? Chill out. Chill out, game. Chill out. Just relax. Uh, let me... Let me put it back into the engine. Anyways, folks. I think you guys kind of get the idea. Uh, I'm having some trouble here. Trying to put the engine block back into the proper space. I'm sure I'm missing something. Or maybe this game's just bugging out on me. It is the early... Alpha press build after all, but I think you guys kind of get the idea. It has some interesting I some interesting concepts going for Jalopy. I like it. I, you know, I think it has some potential here. Except when the game doesn't work. Or, again, I might be just missing something, which is quite possible knowing myself, right? But, it, you know, it's an interesting idea. It got some interesting graphic styles, you know. Um, I like the idea of having to do everything manually, you know, turning on the lights and all that kind of stuff. But, uh... Yeah, yeah, fixing the engine and taking care of your car along your journey of, uh, you know, post-Berlin Wall Eastern Europe is an interesting idea. And I think uh, it has some potential. We'll definitely take another look at um, Jalopy once the game is fully released and made available to the public on Steam. Uh, hopefully the problems I'm running into right now, like not being able to put my engine back, will be fixed. Or maybe better explain to why I can't put it back. I'm sure I'm just missing something. But uh, yeah, definitely an interesting game nonetheless. And we'll be taking, we'll be taking another look at it once it's released uh, for public consumption, if you will. But anyways, folks, I'm going to get out of here before someone beats me up with a baseball bat. I'm piling on a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> a little bit of a, uh, you know, a crowd here. So I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you folks found this enjoyable. If you did, you know, show me some love. Shut up! Shut up! Oh my god, you're pissing me off. And hopefully you found this enjoyable. If you did, you know, show me some love. Like, share, favorite, and comment if you haven't already. Subscribe. I'll bring you lots more video games. And hopefully a lot less road rage. Thanks so much for everyone. Thanks so much for watching. I'll do a shout out.